So you've already looked at uh, the process of gene expression from the aspect of DNA being copied into RNA, RNA being translated into a protein. Uh, that process we also talked about in association, in association with the endoplasmic reticulum. So uh, inside the nucleus, we have the DNA, the chromosomes. Uh, the RNA is moved out into the cytoplasm where protein synthesis begins. On the surface of the ER, we then have many ribosomes attaching. Ribosomes attached to the surface of the ER. We call this area in the, the rough ER because of the, of the ribosomes. And proteins, as they're being manufactured, are being pushed then into the ER lumen. So we have our new polypeptides, our new proteins here in this space. The role of those proteins could be inside the endoplasmic reticulum. That might be where they stay. They may have to come though back to the nucleus. Uh, they may go out into the cytoplasm. They may leave the cell, uh, or they may go to some other organelle within the cell. So this is what the last part of this is going to entail. We're going to look at uh, an example. We're going to use one specific example um, of how a protein, an enzyme, might get into a lysosome. All right, one of the cell organelles. And uh, it's going to kind of give us an overview of how that process happens in general for all the proteins that might get to any, any particular location. <clears throat> so protein synthesis, we'll just say that's, that's already occurring. We look back at other, other lectures to kind of look at the details of that. Uh, if you're not, if you're not uh, sure what we're talking about there, you need to look back. So now what's happening is inside the ER, we're gonna use uh, an example, like I said, we're gonna use a specific example uh, of a protein that is called a hydrolase. Okay, so a hydrolase is an enzyme and it's found in lysosomes. So lysosomes are uh, the organelles that are uh, carrying out intracellular digestion. So inside the cell, it's kind of like the stomach of the cell. They have <coughs> embedded in the membrane of the cell active transport pumps. And those active transport pumps are pumping hydrogen ions into the uh, lysosome to make it very acidic. Also in that environment then are these enzymes that work under these acidic conditions. And so this is where the digestion takes place of a variety of different types of molecules. But what we, what we want to look at is how does an enzyme that carries out one of these digestive processes get into a lysosome? So let's say this enzyme is now a protein. The protein is being made by a ribosome on the surface of the ER. Now this protein then finishes, but it's not quite active yet. It needs to be uh, transported to the lysosome. Uh, and it can also need to be potentially modified in some way. So in the last, last lecture, I talked about uh, a, little bit, a little bit about folding uh, and chemical modification. So we're gonna go over a couple of those examples. So let's say here we have um, the hydrolase. Okay, so our, our enzyme, um, that we're going to be working with is here now inside the ER lumen. Well, one of the chemical modifications specifically for hydrolase is that uh, it has to have a chemical tag to be transported to the lysosome. This chemical tag involves two parts. It involves one part that is a sugar. So the hydrolase uh, gets the sugar mannose attached. Attached. There we go. Uh, and that's part one for a hydrolase. And that happens here in the ER before uh, it leaves. So now that's, just, that's what we want to look at. How does it leave? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to get a form of exocytosis, right, where essentially a, a vesicle is going to form that's going to package up this little enzyme. Uh, and then it's going to break off like that. So this is our, our vesicle, right? Uh, and I'm gonna erase this just so we could do it here. And that vesicle here is going to be called a transition vesicle. Transition vesicle. And then it's going to then move to the Golgi apparatus. 
Now, part of the difference here is that the endoplasmic reticulum, which is continuous with the outer membrane uh, <clears throat> of the nucleus, is uh, one you know, compartment here. Uh, I mean, it's separated into all these little side branches. There can be different enzymes and activities that take place in them, but the lumen is somewhat is continuous between the compartments. In the Golgi, we have different Golgi sacs, and the Golgi sacs can contain different enzymes, which means different sorts of processing can occur in a very specific location. And proteins do not have to travel necessarily through all of them uh, in order to be modified. They may only travel to a specific one to get a specific sort of modification. So a transition vesicle is then going to take the protein from the ER to the Golgi. They'll then fuse together. And now the protein will be inside a Golgi sac. Now in this particular case, there's going to be another modification. The second modification is a phosphate is going to be added to the mannose. And so that creates something called mannose 6, because the phosphate's attached to the number 6 carbon uh, phosphate. So what is mannose 6-phosphate? It's really a targeting signal. It's like an address label. It's a sticker saying this particular uh, enzyme needs to go to a lysosome in particular. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is now that enzyme can be packaged up and then moved, more budding like this, and the buds can then come off and then move to other parts right, of the Golgi. Now, the vesicles that might move between Golgi sacs are going to be called shuttle vesicles. All right, so we have transition vesicles between ER and Golgi, and then between the Golgi sacs, we have shuttle vesicles moving molecules in between them. So we have our protein has been uh, you know, moved into this little uh, vesicle. It's been shuttled now to another sac over here. Now, the reason it went over here is because in this particular Golgi sac in the membrane is a receptor. It's a receptor that actually binds to mannose 6-phosphate. We don't find it in the others, but we may find it in this particular Golgi sac. So what will happen now is when that enzyme binds to it, other enzymes will bind to it. Uh, similar process that we talked about with uh, um, receptor-mediated endocytosis with clathrin-coated pits. So where essentially a group of these molecules will collect and then a new vesicle will form. And then this vesicle will bud off of the Golgi, and it will contain, you know, maybe several copies of this enzyme attached to receptors. And then that vesicle will then move to and fuse with the lysosome. And now these, this enzyme, and I mean several copies of this enzyme, will now move into the lysosome. That's, kind of, that's the basic uh, idea of what's going to happen here. Now, there's other things that can happen. So for the specific example with a lysosome, this is just what occurs. It's not what's going to occur with all proteins. They don't all get mannose 6-phosphate. That's, this is just one, like I said, very specific example of an enzyme called the hydrolase that works in a lysosome. Other enzymes that work in lysosomes or that work in different locations throughout the cell will get different sorts of tags that are unique for them to tell them where they should go. And they'll bind to different receptors and different vesicles will form that will move them to their, their particular location. Another, another possibility is that, say, for totally different proteins, we're not talking about the, the hydrolase anymore, um, let's say there's a protein that is released from the cell. So also leaving the Golgi, we could get another type of vesicle that forms like this. And it can actually move toward the outer cell membrane. And when it fuses with it, like this, its contents can then be dumped you know, out of the cell. All right. We call this a secretory vesicle because it's going to secrete the contents. So various types of cell signals might be released in this particular way. So the cell has to release a signal molecule, maybe creating it, packaging it, and then releasing it uh, in this particular way. The other thing to kind of just keep in mind um, is that there's a certain amount of recycling that also occurs. 
So what has to happen is, you know, this receptor now went to the lysosome. Well, it's also possible for movement to occur in a variety of different directions. So for example, cells, we said the, the endocytosis, right? So the cell can then form a vesicle itself where it's bringing in something from the outside, some sort of content. It forms this vesicle here, and it may bring that material to the lysosome, which then it gets broken down. Some of those contents, because they might be raw materials that could be needed, could actually move back into the Golgi apparatus, and then there's could even be transport backwards, even the other uh, direction, to the endoplasmic reticulum. That's called retrograde uh, transport, where things are moving instead of away from the ER and outward, they're kind of moving back, back toward them, um, because some of these molecules will need to be, like I said, uh, recycled and reused over and over again. So that's kind of the, the basic idea for this. Um, the main things to kind of know are between ER and uh, Golgi or transition vesicles, between the Golgi sacs, you have things called shuttle vesicles. If something's going to leave the cell, it's called a secretory vesicle. And then we just went over just one example of how um, sugars being added, phosphates being added, various types of chemical modification can occur to a protein to put the protein into its final form. But in addition to that, the protein has to be transported to its final location. And this is our example that we're going to use um, for a particular enzyme that moves to an organelle called a lysosome that's involved in digestion. Right? And, uh, you know, and, and so the, the, uh, the little active transport pump that got there had to come there in the same way. So it was instead of being just embedded uh, within the vesicle, it was stuck in the membrane of the vesicle. So when that vesicle fused with it, the transmembrane protein then just became part of the membrane of the lysosome. So we, we, this can happen for transmembrane proteins as well. It's kind of how those transmembrane proteins will get embedded in the outer cell membrane. So uh, just kind of keep those things in mind. Um, look at the example. Uh, you won't have to know a ton of detail with this, but you should be able to outline an overview of this process. Uh, and that's going to be it for uh, protein processing and the end of protein synthesis.